My name is Calvin Wheeler Sr. I'm the father of Calvin Wheeler Jr. His passion always was to help, to go out and help people. Uh, he always loved school. That's one thing I can say about it. I never had to worry about him skipping school, not going to school. He was always there. He always passed everything. His goal was to get degrees because he's seen how I work so much. And he, you know, he said, well, Daddy, you know, one day you won't have to work like that. I said, okay. So when he graduated, I went down there to his graduation with him. And the sheer joy of seeing my son walk across that stage, get his degree, and do it. He did it, that was the first step. Came down there, but when he was down there, his main goal, what I loved about it when he was down there, his passion to go to church. So every weekend, if I, you know, practically every weekend I sent him, I would send him a round trip ticket so he could come home, he would go to church. That's how much he loved church. He loved it because that was his passion. His passion was to help kids because that's what he did when he had his goals was to help kids because he did that. He went and did it. He worked at all the schools. But his main goal was the church. I loved him for that. You know, that particular day it rained, it hailed, all the power went out. So Kevin came over there to see, was I okay? Because when he came down, he said, Daddy, it's dark. And he was there, he was worried about me. You know, he sat there, we talked, like we always did. He said, I love you, Daddy. If your power don't come back on, you can come over my house. I'll call you when I get home. So I waited about a, about 40 minutes and I called him and I didn't, get a, I didn't get an answer. So it puzzled me. Two hours later, I got the call. I never forgot that night. I never forget that day because I was the first one there. And the part that tore me up even more is I had to call his mother and I had to call my other kids and tell them that for them to get there and their, and their cries out of pain of what happened to him. I feel it every day. I cry more than one time a day, and I know I'm gonna continue to. It's not that I want to. I don't have. I don't, I don't have no. I have no way to stop it, you know. Not only was he my son, he was my best friend. Leading up to the press conference, it was beautiful. You guys did everything, everything. You put it out there. And, I, and I'm gonna tell you, the conference, what I really liked about the press conference, I got a chance to get uh, the flyers and we put them out there I got a chance to talk to a lot of people even up there where it happened at you know y'all get out here you go to the families and you make them feel welcome you make them feel good you make them feel like somebody really cares this support has to be it has to be that this has to be done and I feel like everybody should do it. <laughs> Cause this right here, I'm sitting here right now and it's taking away so much pain that's in me to sit here and talk about him and tell you a beautiful person that he was. Excuse me a little bit, it's like I lost him and matter of fact, I did lose him. Because he's, you know, he's universal now, he's an angel now. So he's still helping people, still doing his passion, still got God as number one in his life. What you guys are talking about, I support it 100%. Give me whatever you need for me to do, let me know and I'll do it. I have to. We need help. If, if, if you could do anything, if you know anything, Please help, you know, anything to help the police, help crime stop it. Justice for Calvin. Can't let this go like this. And, and, it, and it's not only my son. All these people that's out here that crime stop are putting up here. No one should have to go through this. Because this ain't, this ain't good. This ain't a good feeling. Please, if you know something, help them. Please don't let this go like this.